Hello everyone. We're back in Coquitlam. Did a little differently today. I was saying in the latest video, I think, that I was taking the most complicated way pretty much to get to those areas I was getting to in Coquitlam here. I recently I just discovered that last time. Apparently hiking up from the gun range area is really easier. So well, that's what I'm doing right now. And uh, honestly, I'm gonna save almost two hours of hiking doing this. So, about quarter after 10 when the cab dropped me off. On the way back tonight, I'm actually going to uh, just hike through Bullet Dodger and go all the way back to the Sky Train by foot. But this this way, this is allowing me to save a bit of daytime, get most out of the light. Got a lot of work today, and uh, do some cooking, actual cooking, not just ramen noodles or oatmeal which I haven't even showed any of that anyways but I'll show some actual cooking so I've got to get up there I'm gonna go today the goal is to go past where I was last time which was where the old ski lodge was before someone set fire to it so I'm gonna go past that try it out really good weather today I'm really really thankful I was not expecting that it was supposed to rain and then it was supposed to be partially sunny and then rain I even said something about snow at some point but it was supposed to snow within next week but anyways for today the weather was all over the place and uh, it cleared out actually so there's a little bit of clouds here but barely anything I'm very, very thankful. It's gonna make, I was able to kick out some weight of my bag. I was able to, you know, the sweater I'm wearing right now is my backup sweater. I was gonna put that on with something under to keep myself warm up there. But actually my main sweater, I'm only wearing a t-shirt under this. I can sweat all I want. The wind's going right through it and drying me. Yay for wool. But anyways, we are, that's a nice little creek. So many bikes up here today. Saw about 20 to 30 vehicles parked. Weirdly all with like off-road capabilities. I don't know what they're doing up that road. So, I am now at the junction where I would pop out after walking off of Dodger, the Bullet Dodger. From the SkyTrain to this point, like I said, is at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Got off, I've been walking for maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. How to make your life a little easier, hey? How to turn two hours and 10 minutes. Pay $20. So, okay. <laughs> right on the 420 mark. This video. We're gonna shut her down and uh, I'm right up the trail, the one crazy bike trail right after this whole bullet dodger story i'm gonna go up this it's gonna be the last bike trail i'm actually gonna be on for today after that it's all gonna be about logging roads like this but just a little bit higher and well like i showed you guys the other day we'll take some more videos of that got lots of power today there's no rain today is actually ideal conditions <sighs> had a few a couple fails but i think kind of kind of deserve this channel deserves this 
Mother Nature's on her side today. Maybe we'll do some chanting around the fire later. Alright guys, so we're still on the logging road. Obviously, I guess that's where we're taking this whole way. I'm going to be technically on the logging road until I hit the one spot I was at the other day. I'll make mention of that when I get there. Basically, where that gate is, that's where we're going. Another bike trail is there. Uh, how I got to here, instead of trying to go to Monroe Lake the other day, through the other bike trail and back the other area, uh, once I got to this, Harper Road, I met this guy, he was on his bike. He was coming up here and he was telling me about this road and everything. How you can get up to pretty much a summit trail up there and everything. So I didn't really know about all that before. I didn't know how accessible it was. I didn't know how much time it would take to get there. Now, if I was a young buck, I had all the time in the world on my hands. It's not that much of a worry, but when you have some time frames to respect, it's really hard to gauge sometimes where you're going, what you're going to do, how much time you're going to spend there, how much time do you need to rest before you head back. So, backcountry thinking. It's uh, something, if you're going for just like a, a long hike, I mean, if you're not used to being out there so much and you take, you go to North Van and you hike to Crystal Falls and come back, that's probably going to be a really good workout for you. But if you're more used to it, and you've seen lots of smaller trails like that, that kind of stuff gets a little boring. <clears throat> There's not a whole lot of awareness or education, I find, unless you really dig into it for all the trails and all the places you can actually access out here. And I find that kind of sad. There's a lot of people in the Lower Mainland. Okay, let's just talk about Metro Vancouver itself, not in the Lower Mainland, because really, Fraser Valley has their own trails. There's trails everywhere regardless, especially off-roads. We've been digging into these mountains for over a hundred years. There's not really like obvious destinations other than the, the most regular ones that are nearby the highways and stuff. There's so many ghost towns, and oh, now most of those ghost towns are about a hundred years old-ish, and uh, not a whole lot of remains. But the history behind it, that's what really gets me. There's road trips you can take and admire where The guys were back in the day when they were going around trying to find gold and everything for a trade. And... But the step in those same steps, like uh, go hiking up north, uh, north up in Banff, all those trails are very old trails. Trails that were being used for the fur trade three, four hundred years ago. When my ancestors first got to Quebec, all that was already going on for probably about 70 years. Maybe not as far as out here, but if not, they were sure getting close. There's some trails from Hope going to Williams Lake. Can loops. 100 kilometer long trails. 
and the first guys walked on back in the day. And that's the kind of stuff I want to go and do someday. Retrace history. Be there where action was going on. This is technically part of it. The last remains of discovery when people were climbing up these mountains close to the city and tearing down all the trees. So, history. Not everybody cares or like it, but some like me just can't get enough. All right, so just wanted to make a quick, a quick little video here. Um, basically, I've been hiking for about an hour, and uh, just over an hour, an hour and ten minutes or something. And uh, probably have about 45 minutes left until I'm at where I was the other day. I have my fire and I intended on camping, but it's too wet. I couldn't find enough firewood to keep warm and dry. And I don't have the proper gear to camp in the rain without a fire. So that will be to be per in future purchases. All of this has going down. That's going up. That's not too bad. It doesn't look too bad on the camera. But, uh, I was hiking this all in the dark the other day. An open area. See, just where I was at last, where I filmed that gate. There was still a bunch of those, uh, those uh, birch trees, a bunch of dead standing ones. Like the other day, basically, if I uh, started setting up up there once I hit the, once I found the old ski lodge, instead of uh, setting up camp, I just headed back down, headed back to those areas where there's some more birch tree. I could have easily had more than enough firewood if I found a proper spot away from the trail, out of the way, out of anyone's hair. I want to be camping right by a cabin by mistake. So, so once again, a lot of variables. A lot of things make that situation change quickly out here. So, uh, today so far, though, we're good. This was all dark the other day. It was pitch black when I was walking here the other day. Completely dark, not a single light. There was clouds up in the sky, no light, other than my flashlights. And as you see on the camera, as you can see on the camera on the other views, other videos, it's not the greatest light, so. I mean, it's good, I can see enough to See where I'm putting my feet, and if something's coming charging at me, I know where to aim my bear spray at. So, oh man, it's gonna turn out to be something uh, around four and a half hours, almost five hours, condensed into. Just, just a little less than two hours, or about two hours. That's more than half the time cut off. More than half the time. That's two and a half hours knocked right out. It's worth spending the extra money sometimes. Burke Mountain on our way to a potential summit. What a workout. And it's still just a logging road, but it's constantly going up. So I have to stop a couple times just to make sure I don't sweat too much. Air out the 
sweater quickly. <sighs> well now, the big part of the elevation gain for the first part, that's mostly done. Now it's going to be some wavy up and down. A little creek crossing the road here. We'll see what it looks like after. Once I pass the spot where I was at the other day, I don't know what it's going to be like. There's a lot of fog. I could barely see the trees through the fog going a little higher. So I don't know how much more elevation gain there was from there. So we'll see. Might not end up going to the summit. Although it would be nice. When I was in Surrey, it looked like well, there was basically no clouds in the sky anywhere other than over Burke Mountain, Kukwitla Mountain, what it seemed like. So, maybe I'll get lucky and that will clear out. Or maybe Mother Nature is done with being super nice with me and she'll just keep it cloudy for the rest of the day. So, we'll see about that. I almost have these cabins. <clears throat> If there's no vehicles parked there, I'm gonna take a quick walk in there. I've never actually seen that myself. Let's see, maybe I can show you guys quickly. There's two known spots to me. And there's cabins. Oh man. So on the way in last time there was no vehicles, but on the way out, there was uh, two different spots where I noticed where there was an entrance for cabins to which I didn't actually go and search out more than that. There was actually vehicles too, both of the other spots. So let's see if there's no vehicles this time, we'll check it out. Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> about two hours into hiking, Made it to the cabin areas. Surprisingly enough, you can still hear the shooting range from here. Kind of. I wasn't really expecting that. But, uh, anyways, it's not too bad. Hmm. I don't think I'll go through here. Maybe it will. So there's that one cabin I just showed you guys, but there's a couple other ones on the side. That is just... See, this is the kind of stuff I needed the other day. All this dead wood on the ground. I don't need this banana peel no more. Okay. Alright, so much firewood. Uh, portal potty. Oh, it's not portal, but. No path there. Ah, that's a really nice cabin. We can lease those. When the guy was here when he, just the other day, the guy that ended up driving beside me, I recognized the vehicle and. It was parked just beside the, over here, where the path leads to these cabins. So, uh, oh, what's that? It's got to be an old stove or something. No, yeah. old fireplace. Nice. Some sort of emergency door there. Uh, people actually tried breaking in. That's too bad. That's annoying. That's so annoying. I don't know why people would come messing with these things up here. You now these... Oh, well, this one. I don't know for how long this one's been there. Probably built since... You know, it's probably one of the latest ones that was built. 50s, 60s. I don't know exactly the history about that. But, uh... They're not allowed to build here anymore. I can repair but they can't build no more so much garbage wow 
check that out. A pile of old stoves and stuff. Another cabin right through there. And see another one right through there. Let's see if we can see them quickly and get to them. Oh yeah, there's a trail right here. That's the actual trail. What did I just go through? Oh, I went through the brush. <laughs> All right, let's go check that out quickly. Wow, what a fairy tale. My goodness, I would totally, absolutely come out here and lease one of these. I don't know how it works. Hmm. That one's actually tied up with a metal rope. I don't know if you can see it. It's tied up to that tree. Let's check that out quickly. I don't want to waste too much time here. I've been hiking for two hours. About just over four hours of sunlight left. I gotta cook my food. I gotta digest my food. Oh, there's another one down there. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of cabins. There's another one through the trees down over there. Let's check out this one. I'm not gonna go check out that last one I just pointed out, but oh, far down there. That's wow. Check that one out. Uh, is that cool or what? I, would, I really wonder what kind of shape they are inside. Well, I'm not going to be going in there. Obviously, it's all locked down. And if someone saw me messing around with their cabin, they would be really mad. I would be really mad if I was the one coming here. If someone was messing around. They'd probably pay some good money to lease these. It's a lot of work to maintain this stuff. That's up to them to maintain it all. Nobody's maintaining this for them. Sure, you want to lease it? Go up there and deal with it. Fix the road while you're at it, too. That's pretty much how it goes. Chalet René. <laughs> That's cool. Probably some French guy. It's a little bit run down. Now, if someone is watching the video here and sees this, and recognizes this, let me know. This, this is really cool. I, uh, in the future, in the not near, in the far future, one day, I want to myself lease one of these. This is by far one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time. There's a recently new shovel, so someone's been here not that long ago. Let's leave that be. Let's keep moving. Where's your picnic spot? I'm glad I got to check out those cabins quickly. I mean, it's a even if there's people here, I could easily still go and check it out. This is Provincial Park. None of these guys that would be in these cabins owns this area. <clears throat> you can walk right by. Even if the guy was on his porch, I could stop by. Take a break, have a sip of water, keep moving. You wouldn't be allowed to chase me. Doesn't mean he wouldn't. <laughs> Such a pre precious area. Okay, now my curiosity is seriously spiked. I need to go check out that one last log cabin down there. Well, log cabin, it's not really, none of these are actually log cabins. Old planks. Nonetheless, 
it's not any less cool. Okay, that stops here. That's not the trail. So cool, man. That's a huge door, too. Yeah. I am very impressed. Check out this last one. It's actually not far. It's just down there. I'd say this is a probably the coolest looking one. Well, not really the coolest. It's a less run down, that's for sure. Hello? I don't want to freak anybody out so I just don't make some noise. Probably nobody here with the amount of how close everything down. How closed down everything is. That's a really nice looking one too. Imagine waking up to this. This is your home. Yeah, someday I need to look into how they lease these. This is a really, 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 really good idea. Wow. I am seriously impressed. All right, guys, if you're watching this, I am not going to mess with anything here. I just really wanted to have a good look at what this, how, what this looked like. It's just amazing. Nice little fire pile here. It's not pretty focus on that. And the ground is frozen. It froze up a little bit here last night. Back door has a work shed down there. Nice big balcony up there. Well, this one's probably not for you, say. This is definitely being used. My goodness. It's just gorgeous. So peaceful. No cars. No sirens. All right. Well, that's it for the cabins. I'm really glad I finally checked this out. Really worth the shot. Maybe someday that'll be us. I mean, someday there'll be us, babe, hanging out in one of those cabins. A note to finish. Anyway, I go in the bush. Oh, this is Provincial Park. This is all old garbage, old stuff. I get it. I get it. But I see this kind of stuff a lot in the bush. Other places I go. There's garbage left behind. Like, not worth it. There's a lot of garbage on this site. This is one old rundown, obviously. Old rundown cabin. Maybe one of the families couldn't really afford coming up here no more. And this one just, yeah, didn't make the cut. Don't wanna to get too close to this. Looks like it's gonna collapse pretty much any time at this point. Although, it's probably been standing like that for a while. Just gorgeous. Just so gorgeous. I would live here. Driving up this road, then I find a job nearby down there, Poco or Coquitlam, right near, I don't know, let's say you work at the gravel pit or something down there to drive from the one spot just here after the trail where the guy is like park, drive down there, go to work, come back up here, 
It got a little boring maybe sometimes, but it's a little city that's right there. You're not completely out in the bush. Isolated. So. <sighs> yeah, I am absolutely mind blown. Amazing. Seriously. Out of words. Video running out of battery. Probably gonna have to park pretty soon because I'm running out of time too. It is almost one o'clock, quarter to one. So I've been gone for two and a half hours and I have made it to where I intended to camp the other day. So I just came from here, that area. I just came up here and had a quick look. There's really nothing to see as you can see. There's just fog everywhere right now. It's looking really thick too. So my guess is that we had a really good morning. It was clear, but uh, clouds and everything rolled back in. Uh, it was actually snowing, hailing, and the last bit coming up right now. So uh, I stopped now. We'll see how that goes. That's my fire pit the other day. I left it there. So I thought someone else can use it. It's actually a nice spot. Nice little spot. Made a lot of heat. Someone's got a better saw than me in this actual area. Could tear that apart. Burn it. I'm gonna go check out in the bush here a little more. And see if there's any way, any chance there'll be more firewood as you go in. So. Now this is discovery, and I'm actually going to pull out my bear spray right now because this is off of the actual logging road, the old logging road, and I don't know how many people have gone through here today. I mean, honestly, I don't think anybody's even come up here. There was about like 20, 30 cars down there with a bunch of bikes, and there's a couple hikers and stuff who started on the first trail. Everybody was, there was a bunch of people, and I cut onto the other trail to shortcut up to the other part of Harper. Since then, I haven't seen anyone, not a single person. So right now I'm gonna pull out the bear spray because I don't feel like being lunch or something. So um, then we'll be making lunch. <laughs> 